Hi friends, welcome back. Dr. Ben, not a real doctor here. We're gonna get a little weird out there today, kind of out there in left field with a little theory. We're gonna be talking about your brain, quantum physics, and setting intentions and how all three of those things are related. Now, I'm a big fan of setting an intention for what you want for yourself from your future, even as small as like when you sit down to do a, a workout, what is your intention for that workout? What are you trying to improve? What is the function of that workout? I believe it makes a big difference. I think the focus helps you focus not only on what you're doing, but I also believe that it tells your body what you want and helps you sort of um, ramp up your nervous system, your hormones, everything to help your body achieve that goal. I think Wim Hof, you know, with his willingness to be studied, has showed that intention is really important in as far as dealing with challenges. You know, if you go into the cold thinking it's cold, it will be painful, it will feel extremely cold. If you go into the cold just very relaxed and relax into it, it is not, it's, it's cold, but it's not painful. I personally have a lot of experience with cold water. I've found that one of the biggest tricks for me to stay warm when it's cold is don't think about being cold. The more I think about being cold, the colder it is and the more miserable it is. So um, what does this have to do with quantum physics? Now, I have a theory. This is a theory of my own. It's sort of something that I've cooked up over the years. I took an interest in quantum physics like 15 years ago and started reading stuff on quantum physics. I think it's very interesting that quantum physics has started to sort of mathematically, scientifically confirm things that mystics have been saying for really thousands of years at this point. I thought it was very interesting marrying of old beliefs and new beliefs and how science is sort of showing that things that people have believed for a long time may have some credence to them. And again, uh, this is a theory. I'm not presenting this as fact. I think it's an interesting possibility for an explanation for the real function of setting intentions. So first, um, when we talk quantum physics, we're talking very small particles. If you're not familiar with it, smaller than atoms and all that stuff, sort of theoretically the building blocks of the universe. I believe that the brain, at least part of it, functions as a quantum computer. Quantum computers are very good at predicting probability because they use sort of the functions of quantum particles to find the likelihood that something will happen. Now, when we talk about quantum physics, we have to talk about particle theory. Particle theory says that an object, we'll say matter, exists as a wave. It's kind of a cloud of possibilities at all times. And then when it is observed, that cloud of possibilities condenses into a single point and that's what observed. So basically we'll use me as an example. Um, if you are not looking at me, I am, there are an infinite possible number of places I could be, an infinite possibility of things I could be doing. And then when you observe me, I'm doing the particular thing that I'm doing. The more people that observe something, the more concrete that observation becomes. Um, basically, I'm trying to remember where I read it, but uh, quantum physics basically says that if a tree falls in the woods and if no and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? The answer is no, because it's not observed. That's what quantum physics would say anyway. So why is this important? Because the only thing that exists concretely right now in your life is the thing that you were observing. The things behind me that I can't see are a cloud of possibilities. The things outside my house are a cloud of possibilities. The, thing in, the things in my bedroom are a cloud of possibilities because they're not being observed right now. And I believe that's important because if part of your brain is functioning as a quantum computer, I believe what that area is doing is it's going out and looking at those clouds of possibilities and trying to connect dots. So what does that have to do with setting intentions? Um, when you tell your brain, let's say for example, you want to lose 30 pounds. We'll just make it something really simple. Um, you tell your brain that you want to lose 30 pounds and your brain, that section of your brain that is a quantum computer, will go out and look into possible outcomes in the future and try and steer you towards decisions that will meet your 30 pound loss intention. 
this starts and <laughs> it, you might be saying right now, then why haven't I met my goals? Well, because we're our own, our, we're our own worst enemies, right? You may say something like, I want to lose 30 pounds, but then there's another thing inside your head that says, I'll never lose 30 pounds. That's impossible. Or I'm not supposed to be skinny or, you know, we always have these other things running in our head that are telling our brain other things. I believe that's one of the reasons that meditation can really help you um, achieve your goals better because you are, not only are you focusing your mind better so that you can ignore the other things that don't matter to your goals, um, but I believe in this case, um, working with this theory, that it also doesn't send mixed signals to your quantum computer. It, if you're not getting lots of mixed messages, then it has a very clear focus. It's like driving down the highway when you want to go from east to west. You just get on the highway and you go, as opposed to driving through town where you're taking lots of little side streets, hoping that you get to your final destination. You kind of know you want to go west, but you don't really have a clear path. So you just kind of go, oh, well, the sun's setting. I'm going to go in that direction. Not the same as driving down the highway where you know it goes right to your destination. So I kind of theorize this is something I've cooked up over years and kind of congealed together. Um, if you subscribe, if you're familiar with the block universe, it basically um, Einstein proposed that time is an illusion. Everything is set in stone. Past, present, future is all predetermined. There is no deviance. Um, our past was determined. Our future is determined. It's not, there's no free will at all. You do what you do. Um, if you subscribe to that, then this doesn't really make sense at all. Uh, I personally do not subscribe to block universe theory just because it doesn't make sense that there would be uh, something like particle theory if everything were predetermined. It would just be what it would be. We can go around for hours and hours and hours forever and nobody will ever have a concrete answer because this is big picture sort of theory stuff. Um, but that is sort of my theory on setting intentions, how a possible explanation for how setting intentions works to bring you towards your goals. Um, will it ever be proven? Will it ever be disproven? Who knows? Maybe not. Maybe in my lifetime. Doesn't really matter. Um, it's something I've kind of milled over. I think it's kind of an interesting concept that uh, telling your brain t what you would like helps it go out into the future and find possible avenues, events, choices you can make that will bring you closer to that. Um, you might recognize them as a strong feeling that you need to do something, go somewhere, talk to someone. These are sort of, my opinion is sort of like you, your subconscious whispering to you, trying to guide you towards what you've told it that you want. Um, personally, every time I've ignored those little feelings, it's gone pretty not awesome for me. So take it for what it's worth, whatever. Anyway, I think it's kind of an interesting, fun theory. I like ex uh, thought experiments like this that kind of challenge the way we tend to view the world. It's very difficult to expand the way you see things if you're constantly thinking in the same way. Really, honestly, it's impossible to expand the way you see things if you're always thinking in the same way. So I think it's really good to go outside the box and kind of look at things like this and say, hey, you know, what if this, what if that? I'd love to hear what you think of my wild and crazy theory down in the comments below. Do you have your own theory? I'd love to hear some other theories for explaining how setting an intention works, like the mechanics behind it. Um, if you think somebody might get a kick out of this, if you want to have a laugh at my wild idea, whatever, share it with your friends. You know, it's on the internet. It's free for all. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. If you like the video, smash that thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. If you haven't already subscribed, come back, get some more crazy theories. Click that subscribe button. Until next time, keep your life in motion. Keep setting intentions because whatever the mechanism is, they make a difference. Love y'all. Have a great day.